And welcome back to another Mugen tutorial. It is I, Rayon. Now, I'm about to demonstrate something that has been asked of me since day one many eons ago. And pretty much it's always been a challenge. So, the most asked question ever is how to correctly index sprites. The um, problem is, in the original tutorial video, I used a paid application and not everyone can buy them. So I had to look for a free application. And then I found the free application, GIMP. Uh, I had no idea how to use it until recently, but I still don't know how to use it. I just know how to do this one major step. So first you go to GIMP's uh, main website, uh, GIMP.org, O-R-G, and download the latest version. As of now, the latest version is 2.10.8 and installed to your desired system. Have it installed already. Uh, on the initial boot up, the GIMP takes a while to load, so please just bear with it. Now, when you get GIMP, you will gonna get it like this. It's broken up into sections. I cannot work like this. It is a mess to me. So I always go to Windows, and I go to single window mode, because it just feels like a full application like this. So now I'm going to open up my sprite sheet. This application actually keeps recent stuff for me, which is good. So. Let me zoom in. This here is Ray. Ray is from a fighting game, as you can imagine. I forget the name of the game, but there's always a but. I will be using Ray as the target character for my remake of the character creation tutorial. So for demonstration purposes, I'm using him to also do this tutorial. Of course, in that video, I will do a quicker more or less in-depth version of um, indexing him because I'm explaining it now so you see these black uh, these gray and light gray squares well when your image has no background color that means the alpha color is transparent when it's transparent the image is most likely a 24 or 32 bit image and this will not work in Mugen so you have to index it he looks like he's laughing here oh he is laughing he's winning all right, so before I index anything, I'm going to pick the rectangle select tool. And I'm going to select these words here. Now you always have to delete things you are not using. You're not using names, you're not using extra palettes, you're not using effects. I will be using effects, just for demonstration purposes. You know, oh, why is this still here? That's odd. Okay, so now I just have the character, his effects, and the portraits. I would, if I'm making a character, I would delete this also, but the demonstration. So after you select, you go to select and you go to non. Now on the right side here, you click on the first tab, which is your layers. It might already be selected, but just click it just anyway, just to make sure. Uh, then the first icon down here is to create a new layer. So create a layer. Uh, this is the default option. Nothing has changed. Hit OK. Now we go here to the fill bucket or bucket fill tool, click that, and these are the colors for the fill bucket. Um, we're going to give it a color that is not on him that we can use. So obviously his skin is yellowish, his hair is yellowish, his pants is blue, his shirt is blue, his shirt is red. So we're going to go with a kind of green because that seems like the very off color for him. Uh, like that seems fine. All right, using the fill bucket tool and this green, I'm going to fill the layer with green. All right, so now the whole thing's green. So now I'm moving the layer on the right side here below the image. So now the alpha color has been removed and it's just gray. I mean, green. Now, this is a little concern, but you know, a better color would be teal. teal. No one uses teal for clothing. I forgot a major port step. I never indexed it, I just added the background color. So let's do that now. So we're going to go to colors. No. Tools. No. Filters. No. Windows. No. Actually, believe it or not, <clears throat> to index this thing is very weird. You go to um, windows, then dockable dialogs. Then you go to color map. And you see the color map doesn't have one. So you have to go to image mode indexed 
you always generate with the max number is 255 and you can it's all general settings nothing has changed from how it comes default I just hit convert and then this is your palette here it, this is also this is your color map basically so you know when you put, enable your color map on Windows tab you'll get this so now if you look carefully um, the black is the alpha color the first call is always the alpha color it's not set correctly so what we need to do is we need to edit the color map so to edit it, I believe I can double click this nope that'll actually change that to edit the color map you have to right click on it any color and rearrange color map okay well, before we continue here see this green I don't know what color green this is so let me go back I'm gonna use the where is it the color picker tool I want to pick it as I pick it it tells me it's this color not this green this green so now when I go to arrange color map I know it's this green so I'm just gonna drag this over to spot one or zero I guess and hit OK so now that makes it the alpha color so now I go to file export as uh, I'm gonna add an A to the uh, file name here export it leave all this the same nothing is changing and that's that so now I'm going to minimize this I'm going to open up the sprite sheet now and bada bing bada boom it's opened up an iDraw which I strongly recommend you use for Mugen just because it guarantees your sprites working and if you look on the right side here your palette is what it is supposed to be we made the first color this green which I don't like so I'll use teal and look it changed so now if I wanted to use like a super bright green oh god my eyes or a pink oh god it's all good I like teal but yeah from this point then you can edit sprites as you need to or anything else uh, you can start ripping the sprites uh, personally for myself I like to have my palette box clean so I would just turn this black and turn this black and then I would left click right click and then if this button's not lit up you press this button and then it works and you press it and it just turns all that black so then everything in this palette which is mostly because of the uh, portrait down here it looks like this um, everything in this palette will be here so it, it'll be easier for you to um, change palettes for the character in the long term but yes, that is pretty much it using GIMP. Um, so in short, you open your image. If your image does not have a background color, you add a layer. Using this, you add a layer. Use the fill bucket tool, make a color. You put the color. You switch the layers. If you do have a background color, actually, let's do one more. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I also have a picture of Rugal. This is a GIF, actually. It's not an animated GIF. Same thing though. All right, so Rugal, we'll do this one quickly. So now we are going to zoom in 100% just because I like to see my pixels perfect. All right, so now this is fine. Uh, we're going to image mode index. He's already indexed. Let's go to color map. All right, he's got the color map set up. So now what is the alpha color? The alpha color is this horrible light burgundy color we're gonna click it okay this is the alpha color so I'm gonna arrange palette this ugly color is it so I'll put it there hit OK file export as uh, well no we, we, we're not naming it rugel.gif we're gonna name it rugel.png use PNG because uh, I, I draw can use PNG files uh, don't never use bitmap bitmap is evil Okay, so now that's that. And now we open up Rugal, and there you go. From a GIF to a PNG with total control over his palette. And this will definitely work in Mugen 100%. If you have questions, join me on Discord and ask questions. I've got answers.